Baking is the most important part of a 3D modeling workflow, so we need to bake some essential maps for doing the texture job correctly. Baked maps like AO, curvature, position, normal and object normal maps are used for greater control over the texturing process. Before diving into Marmoset Toolbag 4, we need to prepare the high poly mesh first. The low poly mesh is here, so now duplicate it and make a different collection for them. Disable all low poly meshes for now and concentrate in the duplicate message. To convert a low poly mesh into a high poly, we will use the remesher workflow. Select one of the objects, then tap into edit mode. Before starting, click on the edge selection mode and check for any non-filled faces. Then go to select, select by trait and non-manifold. Then G for grab. If any edge is stretching, it means some of the edges still need to be filled. And one more thing, if your mesh has n-gons, it going to cause some issues. So fill up every n-gon. I talked about the one-click method to optimize a mesh. For more information, click the i button. The main reason to make high poly mesh is to have a smooth sweet bevel around the edges of entire object. Select the object, go into edit mode, select the sharp edges and add crease on those edges. Now we gonna use some modifiers. In the modifier panel, add a subdivision modifier, which is going to add extra geometry in our mesh. Then add a remesh modifier. The smaller the voxel size, the thinner the bevel will be. Check for smooth shading. Add a corrective smooth modifier for smoothing out the bevel. Last, add a decimate modifier and set the value 0.5 to minimize the high poly count. The only downside is that this is a hardwired intensive process, so it takes a while to calculate everything. For shorter bevels, you could use the bevel modifier, but sometimes it causes shading artifacts when clamp overlap is unchecked. We have to rename our meshes so that toolbag will understand which is low poly and which is high poly. Select low poly, then underscore low at the end of the name. As well as with high poly, select and rename underscore high. The names of the object should be the same, whether they are high poly or low poly. After renaming, select only the high and low poly pairs and export as FBX. Check selected only. We are now in Marmoset Toolbag 4 and now we can start the baking process. Start a new baking project and load the exported model. You can toggle the H and L button to see both of meshes. Then in output select 16 samples, format 16 bit channel and in texture set you can crank up the texture resolution. After that we have to check the boxes for the essential texture sets. And those are normal, normal object, curvature, ambient occlusion. And from configure, we need to select one more and that is the position and hit bake. After the baking is finished, click this append button to see if the meshes are baked correctly or not. You can rename objects in an automated way. Click on edit and then batch rename. Select the set name from drop down, add a suffix and type the name. Naming convention is the most important thing about the Marmoset toolbag. If the names of low poly and high poly meshes are not matching, it gonna cause huge baking artifacts. So always triple check the name of objects. The main problem arises when you have multiple objects in the same texture set. In this state, names could be overwritten by Blender itself. So you have to rename low poly objects first, then duplicate those low poly objects. This step by step guide for the entire baking process will help you to prepare some essential maps for the texturing process. Without those, it can be done. So this is for now and I will catch up with you on the next one.